helping in customs in customer service. So by the end of this session, you will be able to have a greater understanding of several aspects of the critical thinking process. It is expected that you will be able to understand and apply these techniques for your problem solving. You will be able to implement many of these strategies put forward in order to enhance your own critical thinking skills and that of your other team members. You will be able to appreciate why critical thinking is of central importance in customer service and the foundation for good decision making. So in life, you'll always hear people say, you need to think critically about this, or you haven't, have you thought about this in a critical way? In essence, what that person is asking you to do is to dig deeper. Now you hear why critical thinking is important to customer service. As we said, it's important to decision making. And every time that you interface with a customer, there's always some kind of exchange. You are providing information, the customer is also providing information. But as I asked one of your colleagues earlier, sometimes in these interactions or communications, there can be conflict, there can be information that is misunderstood for many reasons. So it's important as you deal with customer that you enhance and you improve your critical thinking skills. So what is this critical thinking and why it's so important? So the definition of critical thinking is that it's an intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing. So you're thinking about it, you're imagining the thing, you're applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating information gathered from or generated by, whether you're observing what's happening in your organization or with a customer, the experience you're having with the customer or a reflection of something that took place. So it's a reasoning or communication, and this is guided by a belief and an action. We know as human beings, a lot of how we see the world is stemmed from our own socialization or experiences. And sometimes even in the customer service interaction, our perceptions and belief system can color how we treat the customer or we react to the customer and what type of solutions we provide for the customer. Now, in the, as we go through this session, I don't want the session to be where I'm just talking, talking, talking. So I want you to stop me at different intervals. If you have a question, if you want to chime in an experience, because this session is all about your learning, right? And learning is also a verb, right? You have to put some action to it. You have to put an interest in it. So I will engage you while we go through this session. This session. So the critical thinking aspect of things requires you to take action, to make decision. So you have to ask yourself and ask in the situation, in the context, the right questions and in a logical order so that you can make sense of the information received. Have you ever been in a situation where you weren't present, an incident has occurred and you weren't present and you're asking someone to relay the story to you. And sometimes you're trying to figure out, was this person really there? Because you realize the person wasn't able to fully capture what took place. And because they weren't able to do that, you got information that was insufficient, right? That led you to make a decision that was not the best in decision in the context of things. Now, why is it important to ask certain questions in critical thinking? It's important to ask a question so that you can get to the root cause of the problem. So the questions such as what happened? When did it happen? Who, who are the parties that were involved? Where did it take place? Or where was a thing? Why and how? All of these are significant to the process of critical thinking and helps you to systematically and deliberately understand things and make decisions better. And you, not, you, you can also use this, these types of techniques and skills outside of your organization. So in your personal interactions with friends, you're doing business, you have a problem as a customer yourself in an organization, and you go to a clerk, you can ask these questions to help that clerk to help you solve whatever problem it is that you're having. Are you clear? Is everyone clear? Can you put in the chat one if you're clear, two if you're not? 
clear? All right, great. So we're still looking at the relevance of this critical thinking. And since we said it's a process of analyzing information and which, which requires you to ask certain questions in order to get to the problem, it's a necessary skill in almost every aspect of your organizational life. And as I said, you can use it outside. So nowadays in HR and in recruitment, you'll find a lot of companies when they're doing the job description, they're asking for persons to have critical thinking skills. In fact, if you have gone on any job interview recently, you will realize that job interviews of today are a lot different from job interviews of yesterday's. Why? Because organizations are looking for people who can solve problems. So when you go to an interview, it's not about only tell me about yourself, where have you worked? They will give you real life scenarios, real problems and ask you to solve them right there and then. Some interviews go as far as putting you on the spot, asking you, throwing a scenario at you, asking you to critically analyze that situation, asking you to provide a solution, asking you to solve the question. So you're realizing now, because this is such a critical part of the recruitment process, when you get into an organization, it is required that you have these skills, you possess these skills, and you continue to sharpen these skills. Now, it's needed to process information, as you would understand, in a systematic way. Not a harem scarum way, not a anyhow way, but in a very deliberate way in order to understand. So a problem presents itself to you, a conflict occurs, you have to try to ask the questions in a deliberate way in order to get what? An understanding of what is happening so that you can make a better decision so that at the end of the day, there is a win-win. And when I say win-win, win is not in all essence, win a win. So sometimes as the, the, I would say, the facilitator of the engagement, customer service engagement, your organization, sometimes in that conflict or that problem, you may not win in the terms of how you look. You may not have gotten that customer business or that potential business from that person, but you win in the sense that that person left the interaction that they had with you feeling better about themselves and feeling justified that, you know, I just dealt with Satanya. She couldn't assist me based on different factors, but I felt that she tried her very best. That is how you want your customers to leave you, by asking the right questions, engaging them, and showing a genuine interest in what they have to say and what they're doing. So you can craft your observation, your analysis, your inferences, your communication and your problem solving abilities in order to make sure that your customer is satisfied, right? It helps with the competitive advantage that I spoke about, because guess what? Sometimes when you put two companies together that sell similar products and services, all that is the driving factor for a customer to leave company A to go to company B is just a matter of how the customer service experience is. It's a matter of how Satania or Chantal or any one of you would interact with your customers. So you realize that customer service, the bot doesn't necessarily stop with you as a rep. Customer service, providing the customer experience is everybody's business. It, it straddles all areas of your organization. But the fact is because you who are present here perhaps have the responsibility in, in terms of your job description and your role in the company's customer service, but it's very much a business of the CEO. It's very much a business of the marketing manager, the customer service manager, even the maintenance manager, even the person who is in the, what you'd call the um, and, um, auxiliary department, the person that makes sure that the environment of the office is clean, the external part, the security, all of that, those persons are just as critical as the person who when the customer walks or the potential customer walks into your place of business, they're expecting to have a holistic experience. So they meet the security at the guard, at, at the front of the building, it shouldn't be rude. They walk in, if someone is there cleaning up, they ought to be just as pleasant and engaging as any member of staff. It also helps with reducing misunderstandings and improving communication. Why is that so? 
it, it helps in the sense that it requires you to ask the, the pertinent questions. Remember, we mentioned those five W's and the H, why, who, where, when, you know, and how those things help in, in creating that relevance of the custom, the critical thinking aspect. So how do you build these skills and why are these skills so important? We are going to reiterate this throughout the entire custom, customer service presentation. It's important because at the end of the day, customers is what build your business. Customers are why you have a job. It's why I'm, I am here today with you. So every person, and sometimes you may want to look at customers. You may not want to look at customers as the, the persons that only the persons that walk through your building to buy your goods and services. But I, I would also want you to, to be cautioned that the very persons that you work beside. So when I think it was Chantal who said that Angel, Angela, right? Mike wasn't working. Angela is a customer. If um, so, Tanya works. So two persons identify themselves as working with Fraser Fontaine and Kong. All your other colleagues at Fraser Fontaine and Kong are your internal customers. And the techniques that I'm teaching you today can also be applied in your interaction and the experience that you have inside your organization. So how do you build these critical thinking skills? Um, are you still following me? It sounds very quiet here and I don't want to feel like I'm talking to myself. Any feedback? Are you following? Anything to share? I'm following. Anything? Following. I'm All right. Following. So right. <laughs> and remember, I'm asking you to share your experiences. Right. And we're going to use at the end, towards the end, we're going to go through some of the exercises utilizing some of these techniques to solving particular problems. So in building this, this, these skills, right, you have to know that it's important that you listen. A lot of times I find in our culture, right, and it, it happens in, across the world in, in different cultures and, and, and situations, but I find in general, you know, this is where I've lived the longest in Jamaica. And I've found that Jamaicans, we tend to talk a lot, but we don't listen well. We don't, and we jump to conclusion. And I've had the experience repeatedly from doing business. I remember I was like that at one point in time, but as I, I developed and I trained and I, I grew in my professional area, I learned active listening. But I can remember when I just started working in my 20s, sometimes we want to preempt persons. You just want to hear two words and you jump to a conclusion, and we all do it, right? I'm no different from you, and you're no different from me in some aspect. So active listening is one of the most critical aspects of this critical thinking skill. You have to know the difference between passive listening and active listening. Now, what is this? The passive listening is like, for example, I teach, I lecture, and sometimes I will be talking to my students, and they're online, or even when it was face-to-face -face, and their, their bodies present in the lecture hall, but you ask a question and they, you can see the, the, the body language and their responses, uh -uh. they're right there, you know, and they'll say, I said, did you hear what I said? Oh, yes, miss. And then I would ask them, so what is your response? Cannot respond because they were, while they're there presenting body and they say that they're hearing, they are not listening. So the active listening requires you to focus on what is being said with an effort to understand and comprehend, right? So that you can provide the requisite feedback to the customer and giving the customer the right solution to the problem. So active listening is a critical thinking quality that is needed in customer service. It's not just customer service, any aspect of business life. Your manager needs to be able to actively listen to you when you speak so that they can see the issues outside of what you're saying. See the issues in the sense that, okay, I hear my staff. I can see my staff saying, oh, they're overworked or they're frustrated. But if they actively listen, they can get to why the why. Why is my employee frustrated? Why is Sutanio 
you know, not showing an interest that she, like she was in, in, in certain aspects of the work? Is it because Sutania has been speaking and her manager has not been hearing and actively listening? It could be. So whilst you can use that with your customers, you can also use it in the organization. So when you practice active listening, you will be able to demonstrate empathy. And what is this empathy? Showing concern, showing your client that, listen, your problem is just as important to me as it is to you because I am here my organization, Fraser Fontaine and Kong, we are here to serve because guess what? So Tanya and Chantal recognizes that there are so many other competitors out there. So you have Guardian Life, the different general insurance companies, the brokers, all of those persons are your direct competitors, right? And you have to recognize that it's a matter of just service that is going to, to let customer A stand